you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I go again. <laughs> oh, wait. Yes, okay. Do you know, do you know, we live and work in places that are surrounded. We do our mm -hmm. shopping and we, we, cre we create in it. And we interact with other people there. Almost all our daily activities are connected to and related uh, with urban public space. Now let me ask you something. How public is public space? Are we aware of its importance for our well-being and the possibilities it can offer to make cities enjoyable? What would this space look like if we would have a sense of, this is our space? Did anybody ever ask you what kind of ideas you have about public space? No, me neither. So we all missed the interview. I believe the key to make urban life healthy, creative, and joyful is to focus on the connecting quality of public space and how we experience a city and feel about it is through our senses and it is our senses that are often forgotten in nowadays urban planning. I remember the time that I just arrived in Chiang Mai and for weeks was armed with a map and a bottle of water, like any, uh, uh, any other tourist, walking the endless streets from place to place. <laughs> from place to place. And sub, uh, very soon I discovered that the life of a pedestrian is not always easy. In the middle of the often very small walkways, banners, billboards, and electricity columns were placed. I asked myself, why are, do why are they doing this? Later, I understood that mobility actually happens on the roads, by motorbike or by car. But what I was doing, like all tourists, I was exploring a place. I wanted to be part of it, fully in it, with all my senses, by seeing, hearing, smelling and touching it. Every trip was also an adventure, because I discovered places that are not found in any guidebook or on any map as hidden treasures. For me, these places are the most unforgettable sensory experiences. Unfortunately, one problem every city is facing is the unused, misused, or abandoned space between buildings and attractive places. The reason is because planning and designing in fragments. A building here, and a beautiful place here, and another place here. Designing the private space and leaving the rest, the in-between space, as leftovers, negative space. These places are literally no man's lands because nobody feels responsible for them. The most important role of public space as the connection of everything that takes place in a city is not fully understood yet. Why has this happened? I think during city development, the public, we, the actual users, lost our sense of ownership. Our public voice in public space became absent, got lost. When I see these places, I feel sad 
and I worry about them, that sooner or later they will turn into parking places or junkyards. Only because of lack of creativity. Come on, we can do better than this. I think it is time to actively bring back our public voice into public space and feeling collectively responsible for it as a whole. From the field of architecture, where I come from, I know that a one-size-fits-all solution does not exist. For instance, to design and plan public space in cities where violence and vandalism is threatening urban life needs another approach than, for instance, for a city like Chiang Mai, where anti-behavior in public space does not happen, and that's quite unique, you know. However, I discovered that Chiang Mai is also infected by leftover places, which is in such contrast to the cultural values and beliefs of local people and the importance of public space for them. I believe if we transform and reintegrate abandoned spaces as meaningful and serving places into our urban environment, Chiang Mai can be an example and can teach other cities how to be the creative city for the public. How? Collaboration. Collaboration is the most powerful tool to get ideas and inspiring results. Chiang Mai, as a university city, has so much knowledge. Students can do investigation and research on areas as real-life problem-solving education to create tailor-made solutions together with academics, professionals, and residents, the public. For the same reason, cities in Holland regularly organize street contests, and it works. At the, architecture, at the architectural offices, hang on, <laughs> I need a glass of water. At the architectural offices, we always worked in a team of designers, engineers, and artists together with the users of the building. We believed that our, our work doesn't stop to get the internal functions and the es external aesthetics right, but that a building must relate to and interact with its surrounding. That it must collaborate with the existing values and needs of the area it is part of. For this building, I was in the designer team. It is the library of the Technical University in Holland. Why I'm showing this is that a building can be a sensory experience as well as a landscape for public use. Get yourself a book and sit in the grass. In a city in Portugal, designers used communication design to guide and inform pedestrians. This would be a great idea to guide people to the hidden treasures of Chiang Mai and tell stories about all the different areas. I have a vision that we together, with all hands on deck and with our senses, for our senses, create a city in which wherever you go it is a pleasure to be and that reflects and prolongs Chiang Mai's unique culture for now and for future generations. Call me a dreamer, and I invite you all to dream with me so that we all can wake up in our very own creative city of the future. Thank you. Thank you.